years ago this week, one of the top hits in the USA was You Learn by the singer who holds the record for the biggest selling debut album by a woman. I'll have details and that top hit after this. I'm Casey Kasem. Casey's Top 40 originates in Hollywood. Well, now we're up to the song Hand in My Pocket. It's by a hot alternative rocker who, as a teenager, performed on TV and on dance records under just her first name. And she says reclaiming her last name was a big step towards growing up. A traffic jam. When you're already late. Alanis Morissette learned to play piano at the age of six. At the age of nine, she started writing songs. And at ten, she landed a role as an actress and singer on a Canadian TV show for kids called You Can't Do That on TV. The show was also seen in the U.S. on the Nickelodeon Network. On that show, she was simply known as Alanis. She was also known as simply Alanis when she started making dance and pop records in Canada. Records that won her a Juno Award when she was 17 as the most promising female artist. That awards the Canadian equivalent of a Grammy. But Alanis wanted more. She wasn't totally happy with the kind of light pop dance music she was making. And so several years ago, she left all that behind in Canada, moved to Los Angeles, and started singing rock and roll. To make the transition complete, she dropped the name she started using as a child actress. She stopped calling herself simply Alanis and went back to being Alanis Morissette. She says that with a first and last name, she felt more like a grown-up. And as a grown-up, she started writing and recording some very grown-up songs. These days, at the age of 21, Alanis Morissette is one of the hottest new stars in alternative music. Her CD, Jagged Little Pill, has sold more than 4 million copies. And it's given her two top tens in a row. You ought to know. And the song that's at number six this week on Casey's Top 40, Hand in My Pocket. That means we're up to the number one song in the USA, and it's by a singer who writes her songs in as little as 15 minutes. How does she do it? Well, she says she's not really sure. You see, she doesn't consciously look for words. They just come to her like an out-of-body experience. The 22-year-old Canadian star says there's something spiritual about the process. She seems to leave her body and have it taken over by someone else. It's as if the songs are being channeled through her, as if they're being dictated to her by a power that she doesn't understand. The singer says, quote, At first, my analytical nature wanted to figure out exactly what was going on. And I couldn't. I was just writing from a very subconscious place, unquote. Last year, the singer and her producer, Glenn Ballard, got to work writing the songs for her American debut album, Jagged Little Pill. And her fast way of working really paid off. In no time at all, they co-wrote songs like You Oughta Know, Hand in My Pocket, Ironic, and the song that for the third week in a row is the biggest hit in the land. The number one song in the USA on Casey's Top 40 is You Learn by Alanis Morissette. Casey's Biggest Hits. A year ago this week, one of the biggest hits in the USA was a song by a woman whose father decreed that her voice would be heard singing the national anthem of Canada every school day for a year over her high school PA system. This star was living in Ottawa, Canada at the time. Early in her senior year, she sang the National Anthem of Canada at a high school assembly. And her performance so impressed the school principal, who happened to be her father, that he decided to tape her singing it. And since Canadian school rules state that the National Anthem be sung before class every day, it was his daughter's voice that was heard daily over the PA system throughout her senior year. A year ago this week, it was also her voice that was heard on one of the biggest hits in the USA. Here's Alanis Morissette with Ironic. American Top 40. We're counting down the 40 biggest hits in the 50 states. Well, now we're up to the latest hit by Alanis Morissette, a superstar who at the age of 12 had a lot of talent but no place to show it off until her manager came up with a clever idea. As an aspiring singer and songwriter, Alanis, at 12 years old, had a very impressive voice and wrote some very impressive songs, but she was too young to get bookings at local clubs and theaters. The idea her manager came up with was to have her sing the Canadian National Anthem anywhere she could. 
You see, as in the United States, before every sporting event, someone leads the audience in the national anthem. The anthem sung before civic events, town meetings, plays, and musical productions as well. It occurred to her manager that his client would be perfect to sing at these events, and she'd get a lot of exposure in exchange. And he was right. She became the most visible national anthem singer in Canada throughout her early teens. And that ultimately paid off big time, because she scored with a recording contract when she was only 16 years old. Today, she's a superstar, singing her fourth big number one on the pop chart. Here's Alanis with survey song number 29 this week on American Top 40, Uninvited. Years ago this week, one of the top hits in the USA was by a singer who used her job on a TV show to raise money to start her own record label. That was at the age of 11. You see, when she was 10 years old, she was a regular on the Nickelodeon cable TV show called You Can't Do That on Television. After a year on the show, this prodigy had enough money to record a song she'd written called Fate Stay With Me. She pressed 2,000 copies of the single, and she put it out on a label she started with the help of her parents called L'Amour Records. The song sold well in local record stores, so well, it led to a job as a professional songwriter by the time she was 14, and a major label recording deal at 15. An early start for the star who had one of the top hits in the USA two years ago this week. Here's Alanis Morissette and Head Over Feet. I had no choice. The hits from coast to coast. I'm Steve Street for Casey Kasem. We're just a hit away from the number one song in the land. But first, rising three notches to number two, is Alanis Morissette, who says she took an extended break from the spotlight to, quote, assess my life and nurture relationships and friendships, unquote. Here's Alanis Morissette back in the spotlight with her latest smash, Thank You. And landing at number 44 for the year is Alanis Morissette. This was the year Alanis returned after an 18-month absence with the follow-up to her mega-platinum CD, Jagged Little Pill. Alanis was out of the public view most of the time this past year, traveling to India and Cuba, and basically getting back in touch with family and friends as well as herself. Here she is with a song about gratitude. Alanis Morissette with Thank You. These are the biggest hits by the hottest stars. At number 16 this week is Alanis Morissette, a superstar who wasn't exactly sleeping during her recent year and a half vacation from the music business. She says, quote, I traveled a lot. I took the time for painting, writing, and photography. I snowboarded, played sports, and did three triathlons, unquote. Now, here's the woman who doesn't know the meaning of the word relax. Alanis Morissette with Unsent. Four years ago this week, one of the top hits in the USA was by the singer who holds the record for the biggest selling debut album by a woman. For more than a decade, that record was held by Whitney Houston's 1985 debut album, an album titled Whitney Houston. That CD sold a staggering 12 million copies. But in the mid-90s, another newcomer equaled that record and then surpassed it. With sales of more than 16 million copies to date, Alanis Morissette holds the record for the biggest-selling debut album by a woman for her CD, Jagged Little Pill, a record she still holds to this day. Four years ago this week, Alanis had one of the top hits in the USA with a song from that record-setting album. Here's You Learn. Well, now we're up to the song Hands Clean by a singer who says she has trouble finding men to go out with. You treat me like... Like a lot of songwriters, Alanis Morissette uses her own life as inspiration for her songs. And she says that creates problems with potential dates, men who are afraid their personal lives will be made public. Alanis admits she has skewered a man or two in her lyrics, but she points out they have to behave badly to become a topic of a song. People who behave well aren't all that interesting, unquote. 
Well, in her latest hit, Hands Clean, Alanis puts an interesting twist on a past relationship. A relationship she had with an older man when she was in her teens. In it, she sings from both the man and the woman's perspective. Keeping it interesting, here's Alanis Morissette at number 25 this week on American Top 40 with Hands Clean. Now, dropping two notches to number nine, here's a woman who recently announced that she was engaged to be married to actor Ryan Reynolds, who starred in the movie National Lampoon's Van Wilder. Here's Alanis Morissette with Everything. I can be a nightmare of the grandest kind. Dropping down the hits with Casey Kasem. Well, now we're up to an American Top 20 Extra, a smash by Alanis Morissette, a star who's now a citizen of not one, but two countries. Alanis was born and raised in Canada. She's still a Canadian citizen, but she says she feels a real connection with the United States. And so she decided to go through the process to become a citizen. A process that culminated back in February with her taking the Pledge of Allegiance along with 4,500 other new citizens. Alanis says it was a deeply moving experience for her. Quote, there was a point during the ceremony where I felt connected in a way that I didn't expect. I was overwhelmed by the realization that I was now part of the USA. Now, with an American Top 20 Extra, here's new citizen Alanis Morissette with a song from 1996. Wow. 